All right, so now we've been um, working on polynomials, solving polynomials, and now we want to solve a polynomial inequality. So here's an example of a polynomial that I've already graphed for you. And before we get into the inequality, let's pretend this says when is the polynomial equal to 0. Well, you know that you've got a 0 at negative 4. Let's see, negative 4. Also looks like negative 3, looks like negative 1, 0, and 2. All of those places it crosses the x-axis. And you will find that with graphing, or factoring, or synthetic division, or a multitude of things that we learned in the previous two sections. All right, so when we're solving an inequality, the first thing we have to know is where it crosses the x-axis. And then you see this little line that I've drawn right here? This is like our little working line. So what you're going to do is you're going to locate and label all of those x-intercepts on this line. You're just sketching them in. It doesn't have to be accurate. They're just all sketched in there, right there. And then I'm going to change colors. And then I'm going to look at the graph, and I'm going to decide when the graph is, let's start at 0. So when the graph is between 0 and negative 1, is the graph above the x-axis or below? It's above, so I'm just going to put a little red plus above there. And then when I look from negative 1 to negative 3, is the graph above or below? I'm going to change colors, and let me change to a different color here. And then I'm going to put a little minus there, because it's below when it's between negative 1 and negative 3. Now let's look at the picture again. Between negative 3 and negative 4, it looks like the graph is above. And then when I get to the left of negative 4, well, then it looks like it's below. Now let's go back to 0 and go the other way. So from 0 to 2, the graph is also below. And then when I get 2 or greater, the graph is above. This is like my little working area. This shows me when the graph is above the x-axis, when the graph is less than or below the x-axis. So let's go answer this one question right here. When is the function greater than? Notice it doesn't say greater than or equal to. It just says greater than. So let's solve this one. Number one, let me change to a color that we can see here. So in interval notation, when is the function greater than 0? Well, it's all of these areas that are in red. So from negative 4 to negative 3, it's greater than 0. And from negative 1 to 0, it's greater than 0. And from 2 to infinity, it's greater than 0. Isn't that pretty cool? That's kind of a slick way to do that. Let's do another example out of this same problem. Number two, when is the function less than or equal to 0? And that's all these blue sections right here. Let's go ahead and write a response right here. When is it less than or equal to 0? Well, from negative infinity, parenthesis on that side, up to and including negative 4, and from negative 3, including it, to negative 1, including it. And again, from 0, including 0, up to positive 2. All of those times, the function is less than or equal to 0. And that's how you do a polynomial inequality. So let me just review quickly a minute our steps here. So number 1, we graphed it. And then kind of simultaneously with number 1, we found all x-intercepts. Number 2, we put them on this little number line. And then we did a shading, or we did a plus minus of when the graph is above and below. And then number 3, we wrote our answer in interval notation, and that's how you do polynomial inequalities.